Green Warrior Jennifer is a resilient and inspiring advocate for the healing power of a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And Jennifer is going to share her story about her incredible journey of overcoming many health challenges and how she transformed her life. She's also going to be sharing a recipe demo with us. And you want to tell everybody what that's going to be about? Yes, we're going to do some fruit uh, tart cups, and um, I hope you guys enjoy them. Uh, they're raw and no no uh, necessary oven, you know, stuff. So it'll uh, it's really they're really delicious, and they do not harm. That's wonderful. They're good. It's going to be a delicious treat for us to learn about and try at home. I'm really excited about that. I love recipe demos, and our Green Warriors love them too. Okay, so. Jennifer's got a, a, a presentation she's also going to share, and she's uh, had many health challenges that she's overcome, and she's learned a lot along the way, as many of you have, as I have. When, when you're faced with some challenges, as far as especially with your health, you will do some research, but not everybody has access to the information that helps them. And so because Jennifer had the success that she has, she wants to share it with all of you, and I'm so glad that you're here, Jennifer, to do that. So oh. I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to start off with our game of true or false. It's time for true or false on Be Green with Amy Live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below, and Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, so we have our first true or false question at true or false, Green Warrior, SOFAS, S-O-F-A-S, SOFAS free stands for a sugar, oil, fat, alcohol, and salt-free diet style. So type in the comments what you think the answer is for that. And as you're doing that, Jennifer, tell us about that. That is almost right, but it's false. It's false because it's... Um, salt, oil, flour, alcohol, sugar, not fat, flour. And it is kind of um, interesting because many people who have adopted a whole food plant-based lifestyle has have heard of SOS free, sugar, right. oil, and salt, but right. they hadn't heard of this now. So you want to talk about a couple of reasons why maybe some of the reasons why you have made this a part of your whole food plant-based lifestyle that you're also sofas free? Yes, absolutely. So um, yeah, SOS was the first um, acronym that I had learned about also salt, oil, and sugar free um, because those things I just don't really do anything to help our bodies heal, especially if you're uh, healing from any kind of a health issue, or if you have heart disease or high blood pressure. And um, also, even if you're trying to lose weight, that can uh, cause inflammation and all kinds of stuff. And what I've learned is that uh, alcohol and flour also are in the category of really not being helpful. And when I talk about flour, I, you know, uh, enriched white flour, things that I've grew up on and most people are uh, familiar with. And so if I want to do flour in something, you know, I might take um, oats and grind them up and that's my flour, but it's not something that's been stripped of nutrients. Um, and, you know, then they tend to put back in like vitamins and things that are uh, synthetic. And so for me, um, I found that just going with natural foods is the way to go and it helps me a lot in my healing. So that's why I decided to go that way. And as far as the alcohol part, um, you know, it, it's just better to eat the grape. So, um, so I do that and then I don't have to worry about any other things that are altering with the brain and different um, uh, other things that can come up by consuming alcohol. Even just one glass, it really isn't beneficial. So for me, I say no way. Yeah, lately I have been going on YouTube and looking up how things are made. Oh. And I, as I said, you know, we're talking about everything being processed. I really want to know what does it take to make these things? And so I looked on how, does, how do they make oil? How do they make flour? How do they make sugar? 
And if you, you, you think that you know how much processing goes in, it's more than you think you know. And when you can, when you see all the, the, the machines and the, 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 the assembly lines and, and the, and the weird chemicals and things that yes. you will be convinced just by looking at that, you'll say, well, there's no way I could do that in my kitchen, <laughs> even on a small scale. There's no way that I could do that. So, so it can't possibly be good. Yeah. Right, right. And, you know, uh, a lot of that stuff is put together by people that are, you know, that's their whole life, like scientists and, and other, you know, people that are supposed to make it taste good and cost less. And it's not really about what's best for us from a health standpoint. It's unfortunately about what's most cost effective and, you know, makes more money for maybe the corporation or whoever is involved. And we'll just start with your presentation now, if that's okay. I do want to, again, just say thank you so much. And hello, beautiful people. I just really appreciate the opportunity to share and hopefully help someone. And my name is Jennifer Diamond, and I live a whole food, plant-exclusive, sofas-free, gluten-free lifestyle. But I didn't always eat this way. Um, as a child and in my childhood, we ate the standard American diet, which is you know, also called sad. And that would be things like steak and chicken and eggs, fat-free milk, processed chips that you can see in the photo here, ice cream and fast food as well. Um, and I also suffered from both food and environmental allergies from a very young age. Um, stress was also a really large factor for me. My parents had a very tumultuous relationship and it ended in a very ugly divorce before I was age two. Um, you know, and I started allergy shots around age five and I, I had allergy shots on and off for the next 40 years, four zero years. Um, and you know, what's really interesting, no one ever thought to consider if any of my issues could have been caused from the food that I ate. So when I was in my teens, I was diagnosed with an ovarian tumor cyst. It was the size of a large grapefruit, and I had emergency surgery uh, to remove that. And after my recovery, I really wanted to start my own family. I was young, and I, I really, uh, because of my childhood, I really just wanted to like start over and do things the way I wished were done for me. And so I was blessed with three beautiful children and a divorce. I did get married very young and had these three beautiful babies, but the marriage didn't work out. And so, um, but I will say after my first baby was born, um, I was diagnosed with a thyroid disorder. And uh, they told me that I was gonna be on lifelong thyroid medication, which is devastating when you're a young mom. Um, but they said, that's just how you handle it. And then after baby two, uh, then they found a nodule that was on my thyroid. And that's like a small tumor or growth, you know, and the thyroid is in the neck area. And so they watched that. But just a real quick fast forward, uh, once I changed my eating, they couldn't find that on the scan after many, many years. So that's a, a really great thing. Um, and so about this time that you see all these kids, I met the man who would later become my current husband. Um, but after dating, we parted as friends for a while. Um, I was always really into fitness. Uh, it was something that I could control, that I loved to do. Um, as a young child, I took dance lessons. I did tap ballet. I performed. And, and um, as a teenager, I was a cheerleader for a little while. And as an adult, I did aerobics and kickboxing and weightlifting. And um, it helped me control my weight and stay trim. And that was really the way that I thought, you know, we stayed trim was watching calories and working out. And so I, it didn't help me solve any of my other uh, health issues that I was going through. And here's a list of, you know, some of the issues that I had to deal with. And they weren't just my issues, but they were also my children's. And, you know, being a single mom, I had to deal with all of that. And it was... It was really devastating um, and time consuming and exhausting. And so I was being treated and dealing with cystic 
acne, which is a different kind of acne. It's hormonal. Um, and I had sinus infections. I was on lots of, lots, lots of medications. Um, Accutane was a medication that they put me on for the cystic acne. And what was really interesting was that the doctor said to me, um, you know, you can only really take this medication once in your life. And while you're on it, we need to monitor your kidney uh, because you can have, you know, um, kidney issues and damage your kidney. And I believed the medical doctors. I, so I said, yeah, okay. You know, cause if he's suggesting it, he's got to, it must be the way to go. So I said, yes. And, um, a few years later, you know, the acne went away and a few years later it came back and uh, that same doctor that told me I could only take it once, he offered it to me again. And I trusted him and I took it. Um, so I was also on steroids like prednisone all, all the time. I had nasal sprays that were over the counter. They were also, um, you know, that you had to get a prescription for. I was on Singular, high dose antibiotics, like a thousand milligrams, four times a day kind of thing. Um, and eventually I did have my first of three sinus surgeries. And still food was never mentioned by any of my physicians. Um, but, you know, while this was going on, I did discover a movie called Super Size Me. And this was the very first time I had ever heard that there might be something wrong with our, with our fast food. And so I gave it up immediately. Um, it also didn't help that I learned that I had lived near the Santa Susana Field Laboratory. It was a federally funded study around radioactive and nuclear energy contaminants. And they were dumping it directly into the water and soil table where I lived. Uh, I had a lot of friends. I lived in this area for 30 years and a lot of friends that um, had kind of weird tumors and cancers and things. And I often wondered, could this have played a role in some of my health issues? So that boyfriend that I mentioned earlier uh, from years ago, uh, we reconnected in 2006 and he was coming from the East Coast and I was in Southern California and we met in Northern California. We were going to look for a home to rent and, um, you know, kind of figure out the transition. And so I flew there to meet him so that we could look for a place. But I got so sick with a really intense sinus infection uh, that I couldn't do anything. And I couldn't fly home either um, because the uh, pressure was was just, I was afraid of it uh, because I had had some bad experiences prior. And so I rented a car and I went to the drugstore and I got a bottle of Afrin, which um, they say don't use more than three days, but it really uh, shrinks the tissues. And kind of, I used it like an emergency and I was able to slowly drive through the hilly, um, hilly areas of California and I was able to get home. Uh, I, Afrin was my saving grace at the time. Um, around the same time, I was treated uh, when I got back for parasites. Um, I was placed on Fosomax and that uh, was for osteoporosis that they diagnosed me with. I was on the Fosomax for five years and I was only between the ages of 38 and 40 years old. So that's really young. Um, in 2010, we moved to Arizona, which we are currently still living here and enjoying it. And I continued having sinus and allergy problems and still no one ever uh, mentioned food or the role that it might be playing which is so interesting because at the time I thought that I ate great healthy food. I had small side salads. I ate salmon, uh, fruit, oatmeal, artisan cheeses and breads. And I did drink the occasional red wine. Um, I was taking lots of medicine at that time as well. And I had a CT scan with contrast and the contrast was once again ordered of my sinuses. It showed uh, complete air blockage and mucosal thickening in several sinus cavities. And I was also diagnosed with fungal sinusitis. If you look at this picture here, um, above my eyes, between the eyes and under the eyes, all those areas, and even on the side, that, that should be air and that's the sinus. 
um, and it should all be black. You know, like when you look at an x-ray, you can see bone is white and then, you know, lungs or things that are black is air. And you can see I hardly have any air in mine. And even in the side where you do see air, it's, uh, it should be wider. It's thick and, and like a peanut butter substance. So not easy to clean out if you blow your nose. Um, now, I mentioned that I was diagnosed with chronic fungal sinusitis. And what that is, it's an allergy to a bacteria that we breathe in the air. Uh, and um, I had even asked my doctor, well, where could I move that would be better for me to breathe? And he said underwater. Like oh. he really, he really said underwater. Oh. So um, I did have the third uh, sinus surgery was scheduled after this scan. And that uh, was, that scan was read by a radiologist who noticed in the corner of the scan, something that they weren't focusing on was my pituitary gland. The pituitary is, uh, sits in the base of the brain behind the eyes. And it's a little tiny gland. It's the size of a pea and it does amazing things for us. It's in charge of all kinds of things, um, including our hormones and everything. And so the, the scan found that there was a tumor inside my pituitary wow. and it's called a, pitu uh, a pituitary microadenoma. And so they said, you know what? we're just gonna have you do the sinus surgery and we'll just have you follow up with a neurosurgeon and, and you know, just for now, don't worry about it. And so I had the surgery and they started me on another course of six years of allergy shots to control the fungal sinusitis. Um, during that time, I had three different injections and, you know, like one was, you know, for um, cats and dander and, and, and so they were all different ones. And the one that was for the mold, for the fungal, it was like a drop, like a drop of liquid, and it sent me into anaphylactic shock. Uh, so <laughs> that wasn't at all fun. Um, but my case was also used to train other otolaryngologists. And an, an otolaryngologist is an ENT, and that was uh, the name of the surgeon that performed my last surgery. And she used to train other surgeons. And when she told me that, I thought, I don't I don't think that's a compliment mm -hmm. to be using my my uh, case to to teach, but you know, it was interesting to hear that. And here again, nobody mentioned food, never. Um, but we did monitor the pituitary tumor. We hoped that it wouldn't grow. The the, the surgeon uh, that I saw said that their equipment is so you know high tech, and lots of people walk around with these and they don't even know it, and it's probably nothing. And so we watched it. I had these scans uh, with contrast every six months for a few years and mine grew. So, um, <laughs> yeah, um, they, they had to remove it. And um, if they didn't intervene, it was uh, pushing on my optic nerve and things that um, could happen if the optic nerve is disrupted is it could impair your, my vision in several different ways, like double vision, tunnel vision, uh, mm -hmm. loss of peripheral vision. Um, it, it could affect the neurological system. Um, the pituitary does bladder control and hormones. And so I did go in and have that brain surgery. It was removed. Uh, during the surgery, I had a small spinal fluid leak. Um, and it was fixed uh, by a graft of muscle tissue from my thigh and then fat from my leg was used uh, in my skull where the tumor was. And so the pituitary tumor, uh, I mean, sorry, the pituitary itself is surrounded by bone. So they needed a team of two teams of doctors, one to get them to the area and then one to break open the bone and collect uh, the tumor. And so they used the fat to rebuild it. Uh, so I can't go scuba diving. I can snorkel though, uh, because I have to be careful of the change in elevation um, and pressure. Uh, so anyways, I was in the CC uh, critical care unit, uh, CCU unit for five days and um, that there I am. <laughs> but over the years, I also had other issues like white blood count that was low all the time, low potassium, which caused heart palpitations. And I was, I was even told by a hematologist, 
well, you need to drink Gatorade. And I was like, have you read the label on Gatorade? Like, I'm not drinking Gatorade. So uh, what else can you come up with? And so we agreed that I would drink coconut water, uh, 16 ounces per day. And I did that for nine years. Uh, In search of better health, though, I learned of the paleo diet. And uh, I said to my family, you know, I think I'm on to something. Check out this paleo diet. It's where you, you know, don't really eat carbohydrates and you eat high uh, meats and fats and and bacon and all kinds of stuff like that. And, you know, does anyone want to do this with me? And my family was like, yes, we are in. And, and so everybody did the paleo diet with me. And what happened was it caused me to gain weight. Uh, it caused me to have acne, not the cystic acne, but other acne. I got uh, elevated cholesterol levels. I felt sluggish. Uh, it just wasn't a good fit. And my oldest daughter was also, you know, trying to help me and help herself, try to figure out the best way that we could eat really healthy and clean. And so she called me one day and she said, mom, 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 have you heard about this thing? I think this is a really good thing. And I said, what, what is it? She said, it's called vegan. And so I, she, you know, taught me about what vegan is and it's basically everything that I wasn't doing. It's the opposite. So it was, you know, vegetables and, and potatoes and, you know, fruit and nuts and beans. And, um, but it was also, you know, processed foods as long as it didn't have the animal products in. So Oreos and, you know, things like that. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm in, let's do this. And I went to my family, the rest of them again. And I said, you guys want to try this vegan thing? No, no thanks. So I did it with my daughter and she also, um, you know, did it with me because I, I figured that it would help me or it could help me take control of my life, lessen some of these growths and tumors that I was having. Um, so I would try it. And I had a lot of growths and tumors that I didn't even mention. Um, And so anyways, I learned about the Engine 2 spaghetti sauce. At the time, it was sold at Whole Foods. And my daughter told me about this as as well. She said, this is a really clean one. No added oils or sugars. And so I got some right away. And I read the package. And it was all about Rip Esselstyn. And I learned quickly about him. Um, I got his book right away, The Engine 2 Seven Day Rescue Book. And I tried it out. And... um, And then at this time, I also said yes to my boyfriend of 10 years the second time. (laughs) I made him wait that long. Um, But thank goodness uh, he stuck around with me because he really helped me. He was a very uh, large pivotal point for me in my recovery. So this is the time where I learned more about whole food plant-based And I learned about Chef AJ and her book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, Uh, Dr. Greger, his book, How Not to Die, Dr. Codwell Esselstyn, uh, T. Colin Campbell, Dr. McDougal, Dr. Goldhammer, I mean, on and on and on. And I watched all kinds of documentaries like Forks Over Knives, Fat, Thick, and Nearly Dead, and just, just trying to absorb as much information as I could. And just as I really started on a great path Um, Getting into all this, I found myself dealing with a herniated disc that unfortunately uh, I needed surgery to correct. It was my only option. And so my recovery was long, um, but this wasn't the end of my health issues. So eating from vegan more to whole food plant-based, I found myself uh, not eating enough food and not doing the right balances. And I found myself in the emergency room. Um, I was told after some blood work, because I was feeling really like I was just going to fall over and I couldn't figure it out. And they said, you are extremely anemic. And the ER doctor asked me, what are you eating? And I thought, oh my gosh, this is like the first time anyone's asked, you know, about my food. I was so proud to, you know, what I was eating. I'm eating this and that and, you know, all these wonderful whole foods. And uh, he begged me to eat an egg. He said, you have got to eat an egg. Can't you just eat an egg? I 
I'm, you know, I'm wearing the, the outfit for the hospital. I'm in the bed and I'm like, no, I can't eat an egg. And, and so he was really annoyed with me. And um, he basically said, if you keep this up, you're going to have to have a blood transfusion because um, iron comes in three different uh, areas in our blood work and the, the, the storage, the stores are called the ferritin and they should be around 40, according to my doctor. And mine was three. So mm-hmm. not very good. Uh, I took him seriously. I went and saw a whole food plant-based doctor. Um, He switched me from the Costco iron supplements to a liquid iron supplement called Floridex. And, um, you know, it's made of food. And uh, I was taking that a few times a day, but it it didn't really fix the problem. And um, so I brought in another medical doctor, a naturopathic MD, and he wasn't whole food plant-based, but he had vegan patients. And he was supportive of my decision. And so I I went with him and I did this for quite a while. He was taking my blood every three months. And I just, it got up, you know, to maybe around the 20 mark, 25, um, nowhere near the 40. And so he said, you're going to have to add an additional supplement. And at this time, I was taking so many supplements. And I said, I cannot take another supplement. Isn't there anything else we could do? And he said, yeah you can go back to eating some red meat, um, four ounces uh, a day and add it to the the food that you're eating. And reluctantly, I I did do that. Um, But, you know, all it did was trigger all kinds of old behaviors. I started going back to eating all the sad standard American uh, diet food and gaining weight. And um, I never got off that iron supplement. So that was interesting. So fast forward, the pandemic hit. And I, at the time, had two grandbabies. And both my daughters were pregnant with two more grandbabies. Mm. They were five weeks apart uh, in having the babies. It was a a really special time for our family. But both (laughs) girls, yeah, both girls were high risk. Uh, They both were going to have to have cesarean sections. And I was going to have to be in the hospital with one of them. Um, and towards the end of their pregnancies, their doctor pushed uh, the, the vaccine, uh, encouraged them to get it, and they decided to do that. Now, at that time, we didn't know what the virus, we didn't know a lot. I didn't know a lot. I certainly, uh, you know, understood that the hospitals, there was no visitation. Once you go in, you can't go out. And, and there was uh, quite the protocol. And so my girls said, you know, mom, would you consider it? And uh, I didn't want, personally, I didn't want to get it. Uh, I was scared about the anaphylactic shock and other things that I had experienced. And I didn't understand it. So I had all these, you know, unknown questions and concerns that I I didn't know where to get answers to. So, but I also didn't want to be responsible for doing any harm to these new little babies and not understanding anything. I reluctantly did get um, the Pfizer vaccine. And um, I was pretty sick after that. But then the babies were born. And there's the youngest one. Um, I was in the hospital. Uh, both the baby and mom did have some complications, but everything turned out fine. And I was in the hospital with her for four days. And then we transitioned to her house for five days. And during those nine days, I only had three and a half hours of sleep. I was severely sleep deprived. Uh, there was a lot of you have to wear the the mask and everybody coming in and the lights. And I just was worried about them, you know. Um, and so I noticed towards the end of the hospital stay that my right foot, the big toe, top of it on the left side of the top was numb. And I thought, well, that's weird. Uh, maybe I slept wrong and, you know, I kind of just ignored it. I noticed it. And then I started loading her car with all the stuff. We were going to be going to her house. And I started to notice that the bottom of my feet were tingling, kind of like um, if you fall asleep on your arm and then, you know, you get like this tingling. Um, but I just ignored it because I had, you know, I had to help her. And so uh, we went to her house and um, I was there. I was the only help. Uh, for her. And I can remember standing against her, her wall in her room, you know, in one of the the rooms in the house, holding a broom, I was sweeping the floor. And I just uh, 
stopped and had to tell her that um, I have to go home. I don't know what's happening to my body. And I felt like I had failed her. I mean, I, I really still believe I failed her mm -hmm. and the baby at that time um, to have to leave. So um, I did leave. I did cry all the way home. I still get very emotional about it. And um, I went home and I slept mm -hmm. for two months. Um, I did get up to go to the bathroom. I did get up to eat a little bit. I did speak on the phone just briefly, but I slept and slept and slept. And um, it was uh, because I was having so many issues. And so things that were going on was besides the numb toe and the tingling in my feet, I started having sensations uh, in my elbow and buzzing feelings like, bzz, 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 or if you get your funny bone hit, like that kind of these weird sensations that I couldn't explain uh, in the elbow pain, wrist pain. I had these sensations go up my legs if I started to walk in the groin area, my face just isolating the lips sometimes. I started to lose uh, my balance all the time. I was weak. I at one point couldn't even hold a pen. Um, the picture on the right is a picture that I drew at one point to just try to articulate what I was feeling and the red was very heightened. I used to describe it as uh, a volume control on a, a radio or a TV when you have it really, really low and it's like that static. It, it was, and then it would go all the way up to high volume and that would just take me down to my knees. So I reached out to my doctor, the neurosurgeon at Mayo Clinic. I thought maybe this is coming from my lower back surgery. Uh, so he ordered an MRI with contrast of the lumbar spine, nothing. Uh, I saw a chiropractor, he did TENS unit uh, and a massage therapist. I did physical therapy and occupational therapy at both uh, therapy at both Mayo and another place uh, in Arizona called Barrow Brain and Spine. Um, I saw two different teams of pain management doctors, an acupuncturist, um, and then I started on spine injections. I had three spine injections, um, wrist injections, elbow injections. I saw a rheumatologist. I had tons of blood work um, and they all said I was fine. Um, I couldn't do much at all. So I asked Mayo Clinic, is there like maybe another specialist that I could see? I'll go to your other location in Rochester. And I was denied. So I reached out to the Cleveland Clinic um, and they said, yes, you can come and see us, but the wait is eight months. And um, so I, then I reached out to Johns Hopkins and had an appointment. Um, and while I was waiting, I uh, saw a total of four different neurologists and the fourth one finally said, there is something we could do. We could do this other test and they take pieces of your skin uh, on the side of the leg. So like a little punch of your skin in three places and test it. And he came back and said, we have a diagnosis. And I was like, oh my gosh, for someone to recognize that I'm not making this up was uh, quite wonderful. So I said, great, you know, what caused this and what's the treatment? And, you know, he said to me, and I, I will never forget this. He said, uh, we don't know the cause. Uh, there is no treatment and it's only going to get worse. And you'll always be on brain altering medications. And I was shocked when I left there. Uh, some of the meds that they had me on was ibuprofen, of course, gabapentin, uh, for nerve pain and they started me on low dosages and for a month and then every month it went increased. Uh, after the third month, I switched to Celebrex, which didn't do anything and I had to do that for a few months to bring up the dose. And then they uh, switched me to Lyrica, which for me was really awful because it didn't take away any of the sensations, but it did affect the way I articulated and spoke. Uh, the brain fog was really, really insane. Um, and some of the tests that I had done also was x-rays, several x-rays of my back, the MRI that I spoke about of the lumbar, they did that with contrast separately for the thoracic and cervical, an EMG uh, test, which is like electrocuting you. And yeah. That's to measure uh, nerve pain. And so I, I did that in my feet and that was so much fun. I did it in my hands too. Um, the only thing that they said was that I had carpal tunnel. <laughs> so um, I did a tilt test, 
uh, another DEXA scan. And then they really didn't know what to tell me. So they suggested that I go and interview to get into a, a PTSD program because they said it must be stress and anxiety. Um, I was bedridden for approximately 14 months during this time. And um, some of the things that I tried that were natural was if you're familiar with um, Wim Hof breathing. Um, oh, but before I go into that, uh, this picture right here is um, when I was at my highest weight, my uh, mom's birthday celebration. She's a twin and they're born on New Year's and I just had to do everything I could to pull myself together. Uh, you could see that I'm not showing my wrist because I'm wearing a wrist brace. I'm very heavy. Uh, I. Uh, you can see my feet or you can see part of my foot. I couldn't walk just on bare feet. I had to have thick socks and cushioned shoes. And after this uh, few hours, it took me four days to bring the sensations down. And um, so now I'll go into some of the things that I tried, um, which is the Wim Hof breathing technique. So not is sure if you're I, in the ice bath. It's, it's when you breathe. Uh, kind of hyperventilate sort of yeah. to get rid of old air and bring in new cells. Mm -hmm. I tried that and I tried uh, cold water uh, plunges. So we have a swimming pool and in the winter here, our pool got down to 50 degrees, which for me is really cold. And I was just trying to bring inflammation down. So I would go in the pool, set a timer for 10 minutes and I would be up to my neck. And I did that for a long time. And this picture, you can see, I started uh, working on manipulating my circadian rhythm. And I would go outside and watch the sunrise and try to do grounding. I wasn't sleeping. And so I was really trying to get things back into order, I, even though I still didn't have answers. Um, I tried meditation. I tried drawing like you saw earlier here. And I've never had any kind of artistic classes or anything like that. Um, and then we, we started removing all electronic devices, uh, the TV, the computer, our cell phones had to be charged in another room. We stopped the Wi-Fi. It would be put on a timer at night. Um, I added blackout shades. I have an air purifier in the room and it makes like a, a white noise uh, sound that I used it for. And we didn't use any lights. So when the sun went down, we would light candles. I, I really was trying everything that I could possibly think of. We changed uh, our filtration system for water to the Berkey water filtration system and added a fluoride uh, water, um, you know, to make it fluoride free. Uh, I took fluoride out of my toothpaste. Um, I tried everything, everything I could think of, Western, natural. And, um, I, you know, I just was not getting anywhere. Um, and so that first baby that you saw, he had his first birthday. And afterwards, you know, I decided that there was going to be three weeks uh, from that time. I was going to have a blood test to check my cholesterol. And my cholesterol was up at that time. And I thought, you know what? I know what to do to lower my cholesterol. So I went and got my Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease uh, cookbook uh, from Dr. Esselstein. And without telling the family, I started making the food. I had my blood test and my cholesterol dropped 50 points in three weeks. So that was really, really uh, encouraging. And my, my healing began because I also noticed that I could get up and my sensations were starting to be a little bit less and I could kind of move my hips. And I was like, oh, I'm onto something. So I ran with it and I ended up being blessed and I was able to go to True North uh, Health Center and I was able to do a 14 water and juice fast there. It's a medically supervised uh, health center in uh, uh, Northern California. Um, and after that, my thyroid medication dropped a little bit, which was exciting. And so I knew I was on my way. Uh, I continued to eat whole food plant-based uh, foods. And uh, here are some samples of some of the, the foods that I eat. And, and um, in the middle there, it looks like a smoothie. Uh, the picture on the bottom is um, food that I grow in my garden. And I just began bringing my food everywhere that I went because now I was able to move around and enjoy life again. So um, things that also happened that I didn't expect, uh, I lost 35 pounds. I had a cyst on my hand from uh, the transition from sad to this. 
and it went away entirely. Um, in fact, during the time that I had transitioned to the whole food plant-based eating, um, I had a horrific sinus infection and I had to seek the otolaryngologist again and the allergist and all this. They had me on three rounds that lasted three months of, of all the medications I was telling you about. And um, so when I went for my follow-up, uh, they, they take a little camera and they look up in your sinuses and the doctor said, there's absolutely no inflammation. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I, I changed my eating. I eat whole food, plant-based, sofas free and gluten free, which I learned about when I was at my water uh, fasting stay. And um, he, you know, he said he really believed in that. And he knows that I'm onto something. And he said, you just keep doing what you're doing. And I said to him, if you believe in this, why don't you tell your patients? And he said, because I don't have any uh, training in nutrition, I can't. Hmm. So um, he said, you're off all your medications. You don't need a follow up. You call me if you need me, but you just keep doing what you're doing. And all I'm doing now is a sinus rinse with saline just to keep things clean. Um, I am still not 100% clear of my small fiber neuropathy, but I'm in the 90 percentile. And so because of it, I'll tell you what I'm able to enjoy uh, now and things that I can do. I can travel and I can play with my grandbabies instead of just sitting near them and watching them. Um, I go to the park and I go on the balance beam. I hang from the monkey bars. I garden. I joined a garden club. I exercise doing yoga, rebounding. I'm currently wearing a weighted vest. I wear a weighted vest most days, uh, sometimes ankle and wrist weights. And so I can also share what I'm up to now because of it. I've been so motivated that I started my own YouTube channel and I share about whole food plant exclusive uh, eating and exercise and recipes. I have an Instagram. Um, I'm working on a um, certification because I am a plant-based nutrition coach and I'm excited about that. I go to potlucks and I hang out with like-minded people. Um, I'm involved in communities like Feel Fabulous Over 40. I try to get on to Chef AJ's live uh, daily and be green with Amy. I mean, this is a great place to be. And I'm so privileged that, to have found your station um, and also be on it. And there's just more. Um, I recently was in the National Health Association's Health Science Spring 2024 Spotlight and featured in Forks Over Knives May 2024 online issue. And now today I'm privileged, like I said, to be here with you, Amy. Um, I've had some interviews with Chef AJ, Michelle Sen, and Children's Health Defense, um, True North Health Center. And I'm able to notice simple pleasures because I'm not in pain. So I can go for hikes and I can look at the sky and I can listen to the birds and look at flowers. And it's just amazing. I, I have an app on my phone called I Am and it sends me inspirational sayings and I also find them online. And I, it always reminds me to do just like Dora on Finding Nemo and just keep swimming. So that's what I do. And I just wanna thank you so much I appreciate this privilege, and I hope that if you know of someone suffering uh, that doesn't know about the possibilities that food can do for us, to please share this and sh spread the word. So thank you. Oh, that was just so, so wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. We had a couple, we had lots of comments, but I'll just say a couple of them. Well, here's Nikki Brett Gatt, she's been on the show. She said, hi, Amy, great presentation. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm so sorry about what you've been through, but thank you for sharing your inspirational story. Thank you and so much, Nikki. Yeah, that's beautiful. Jennifer has an amazing story. She's been through so much and doesn't give up. So glad to see her doing well and thriving. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. And thanks, wanted to, to repeat what your doctor said, if you believe. If you, what you said to your doctor, rather, if you believe in this, why don't you tell your patients? So frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I can share that he had said just an encouraging word at the time he had said to me that he had been to a conference. I guess, you know, you have to do your your ongoing um, education as a physician. And he said that there was a speaker talking about the benefits of food. And so he believes that it is coming to the Western world. Um, and so that was encouraging to hear. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of people who are watching can probably attest to having some kinds of experiences with the doctor. Either the doctor thinks that what they did cured the patient and not what they did as far as uh, the doctor thinks that their in medical interventions or surgeries, that that's what cured them and not what the patient did, which was adopting this uh, plant-based lifestyle. Yes. Or, or they just think that it's a fluke you know, just, just a coincidence, you know, yeah. I think, and, and what you had said earlier that one of the doctors had said that it was basically, they were saying it was all in your mind and that, <sighs> that it must have been just so, so frustrating to, to hear that. It was so devastating. So dismissive um, and, oh. Yeah. It was devastating because I felt like I wasn't being heard and here, it's like, I'm not, I'm not making this up, but mm -hmm. you know, they didn't have the answers. And so. Exactly. Yeah. It's have gone through so, so many uh, procedures and, and I just, I can't just to even have one of the things that you were experiencing would be qu quite, quite a bit for, for one person to handle. Just dealing with one of the things that you were experiencing and all the medical interventions that you had. And, but you just, it, it, it seemed like every time you turned a corner in, in the beginning, instead of seeing some some success, you were bombarded with something else to add yeah. on to your load. And meanwhile, a lot of it had to do with the food. Yeah, food. And, it's magic. Mm -hmm. It's magic, people. I'm telling you, just if you're struggling with something and you haven't tried whole food plant-based, you know, don't believe me, but get your blood work, give it a try. You know, if you're on medications, of course, let your doctors know and just see for yourself. You know, you might, uh, you might surprise yourself and you might stumble onto something that gives you, gives you your life back like it gave me or changes your life. So it's just amazing. Yeah, Steve Alvey had said that he has low thyroid and you had said that you were able to, you didn't eliminate medication, but you were able um, to I'm, do I didn't, yeah, I didn't eliminate it, but I am trying to bring it down uh, with the help of a physician right now. It's the only thing that I'm taking. So it's amazing. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. <laughs> and, and at a reduced uh, dosage. So yes. that's, that is just fabulous. So there is hope and, and we just really need to to seek out the advice and of people that are in the know. And unfortunately, these conventional doctors, as your one of your doctors confessed, they're not trained for right. nutrition, at least the proper kind of nutrition, even that. So, yeah. okay, well, we may be getting some questions coming in as people okay. are watching, but I think let's just switch over because we told everybody that we were also I mean, you tell this wonderful story about healing and, and giving yeah. hope to everybody, but now you're going to share a wonderful recipe demo with us. So can you tell us about that? Yes, yes. So I'm excited to share a fruit tart cup recipe. It's raw and I've got everything set up here and I'm going to take you through it. I'm just going to bring over my food processor. There's only a couple things that you need. and I'm excited to share this with you. So just let me grab that. And I wanted to let everybody know that the recipe will be in the show notes. So you can go onto my website. It'll be available there and it'll also be in the show notes. And if you don't find it, just let me know and I will definitely get it to you. So this is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, Jennifer is setting up all of her equipment now as we're talking. And pretty soon she's going to be doing that fruit tart cup recipe demo. Yeah, I'm right. ready to go. Are you? Okay, excellent. Yeah. So um, I'll just tell you, so I have a food processor here and that's important because that's how we're going to create the the crust for this. And um, for the crust, it's going to be two ingredients. So how could you be any simpler than that? Um, I'm going to be using this uh, silicone like muffin tin kind of muffin pan thing. 
Um, and so I think that's the way to go. I've never tried it with papers. Um, so if you have one of these, it'll be easy to pop it out when it's ready. But um, so I'm going to be using some organic um, jewel dates. I get these at Costco. I know a lot of people get these and they do have the seeds in them. So you want to make sure that you um, take the pit out. And I took them out except for one. I wanted just to show you in case you're not familiar with uh, the medjool dates. This is a medjool date and it's just like the best natural type of sugar, right? It's natural and it's got fiber and water in it. And I just, if they're, they should be kind of soft. If they're not soft, you can soak it in a little bit of water and it will soften right up. And then you can use that water for your smoothie or for other things that's just sweetened. So I just literally uh, pinch it open and then I look inside to make sure that there's nothing black in there because that might be that it's a bad one. And this is the, the little seed here that you take out. And then sometimes the part that it was attached to, the plant, you wanna also get that eyes out. So these are the two pieces. Um, and so you just wanna make sure that you have all of that. And then I've got an S blade here in my um, food processor. And so I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five of these beautiful dates. And I'm just gonna put them right in there. And then I'm gonna use mulberries. Now I have a mulberry tree and it has produced so many mulberries, but I have the dark. And so I went ahead and dehydrated some of these um, but because they're the dark ones, I'm not going to use them. Um, so if you have access to a tree and you want to dehydrate them, you could do that. But I went ahead and got these light colored mulberries um, and these are dehydrated or let's see, are they dried? Um, uh, and yeah, these are dehydrated. And so I'm just going to use this bag here and um, that's it. So a mulberry is just like any other berry. And I'm going to show you what they look like. These are the light colored ones you can see. And then these are my dehydrated dark ones. And mine are much smaller. These probably got to ripen a little bit more. <laughs> so anyways, I'm just going to take the whole bag and pour it in. I mean, OK, so that's that's it for the crust. Now we just have to blend it up. And um, should I, will you, is it going to be noisy or? I'm going to mute your mic while you're blending and I'm going to talk. Okay, here we go. Okay, so Jennifer is got her food processor going and she's going to be blending all that up and processing all those ingredients, not very many ingredients, right? And if you have a question for Jennifer about the recipe or about any of the things that she's done in, as far as healing her different health issues, please type it in the comments or tell us if you've had any health challenges. Let us know in the comments about that as well. And let's just see, I think, oh, she's still going. Uh, so has have any of you, can any of you relate to what Jennifer talked about earlier with all the different health challenges that she has experienced? Do you know of anybody? Let us know in the comments if you know of anybody or if you yourself have been experiencing that and, and what you've done as far as helping you through it. And I think that she's done processing now. So I think we can put her, her sound back on. That was really loud. Oh, <laughs> well, we wanted... didn't hear a thing. So. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> so you want to, you know, blend it. I, I let it go. You really want to let it go pretty good. You really, it's so important to make sure you don't have the pits in those dates because you could damage your blade. Can you show so, us the S blade because sometimes people don't don't know the parts of a of a of a food processor. Yes, I just want to show the S blade, and it literally looks like an S, and it kind of just has a bl sharp blade, and it just spins inside uh, the food processor, and it just looks like an S. And this particular food processor comes with so many attachments. Um, so you want to make sure that you have the right one because you could do shredding and other things too, like uh, for carrots and other things. But so how we want to make sure that this is ready is that when you grab hold of some of it, it just kind of sticks together just like that. And so then that tells me it's ready. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to use a scooper, a melon scooper. You don't have to, but um, oh, maybe this one. Maybe I'll just actually even just use my hands. 
Um, and you just want to start to put some in the pan and I use my fingers. You can use gloves because it is really sticky and you just want to just create um, the bottom of it, you know, like the crust part. Now, if you do have enough, um, you can kind of go up the side of the walls. It doesn't have to go all the way up, but just so it's not just flat on the bottom. You want to get a little bit of the edge so that it will uh, be able to hold. And so that's the first part. And so while I'm doing this, if there's any questions you want to ask me or anything, you know, let me know. <laughs> okay, after you get a couple of those going, maybe you can bring it up to the camera so that people can get an idea of what you meant about how far to to make the crust, how far to fill it up. I don't know if we'll be able to see it on the camera, but we can yeah. we'll try anyway. And then, I will, yeah, I will certainly do that. And sometimes I just put, um, you know, do the best I can. And then if there's extra after they're all filled, I go back and use it all up, just um, bring it in. But here you can see, you know. Wait, let me put you on a full screen, okay. So it's not all the way up to the top, but it is about a uh, halfway. It's not completely flush. And hopefully you can see that. Yep, I think they will be able to see that. And I love, I have a similar muffin tray as you have, and I love it because I've tried the paper. They have like parchment paper cupcake things. And oftentimes, especially when we're using things like dates, it gets pretty sticky. It gets and, very sticky. And, yeah. and then you've got a lot of the beautiful tasting ingredients that are stuck into the the crevices of the paper cupcake holder. So when I transitioned over into this type of baking accessory, this silicone one, everything just pops out because you can actually like, like, like something like an ice cube tray, some of the ice cube trays that you can pop out from the bottom, that's how these work. So you can just push your finger on the bottom when it's cool enough and it'll help you pop it out. And there's very little that's left on the insides of the cupcake tray there. And and it does make it cleaning easier too, because at once I, for me, myself, when I pop them all inside out, then I can just rinse it in the sink and, and the insides, instead of having to stick my finger in every individual one, the insides are already out. So it makes it easier, I think, to clean. And that was your steel reinforced around the edges? Yes, it is. Yes. So that makes it so that it it doesn't fold here. This I'm trying to twist this. This is solid and only the middle part is um, soft and like, uh, you know, movable or, or um, you know, able to bend. Um, I do want to also say, I know I'm not using a spoon to do this, but you can certainly do that. But I'll tell you a quick tip because it's so sticky. If you just, if you are going to use your hands, whether they're with gloves or not, if you just get your hands, just the tad is just a little bit wet, just like, just like a pinch of water, it will help you not have it stick to your hands and, and you can, you know, um, push it down in the bottom and you won't be like fighting it with it sticking in, you know, all of that. So that's a tip that I learned and that's been very helpful. And as soon as I finish this last little bit, I'm going to show you again. And so hopefully you can see how it goes up the sides. Well, very nice. We're doing, while we're doing this, I just want to give a shout out. I want to thank our newest subscribers. We have Hud Hud, Ann Jones, Brenda McKinney, Edward Harlan, Rebecca Bocinek, Dawn Weir, Gigi's Plant-Based Life, Carol Farrer, uh, Romika Avondale. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right. Sorry, Andy Swanson and Jesus Junkie, and those are, are just our latest uh, Green Warriors. So I uh, give a shout out to them because I so appreciate all of you subscribing and sharing everything. Daniel said, your transformation is truly remarkable. Were there any specific exercises or physical activities that you incorporated into your routine to complement your dietary changes? Yes, thank you so much. That's an excellent question. And you know, like I had mentioned earlier that I was um, into fitness before. And so my brain could remember what I could do before. And I had to tell myself, I'm not there anymore. And I don't need to go back, I'm gonna go forward. And so just starting where I was, was the best thing that I could do. 
And so I'm currently wearing a weighted vest. I wear a weighted vest. That's not even what I started. But the point is I started with an empty vest and I wore it for a few weeks, for a few months. And then I put in a half a pound. And over the course of a year, I'm up to 10 and a half pounds now. But even before that, I couldn't walk to the kitchen. I couldn't sit at the table and feed myself because I couldn't lean forward. So I used to put my hand under in this way. So I had to really just start at the bare bottom. So wherever you are, walk a little bit, do whatever you can, and then over time you can increase. And now I walk the dog every day. I do weightlifting, um, you know, but I didn't start there. I started just using my own body weight, right? Using like pretend I'm carrying something heavy both ways up and down and uh, just incorporating things. And of course, making sure that it's safe, right? Cause I have uh, a back, uh, you know, issue yeah. that, that I have to be concerned with, but um I, I would say just starting slow, not anything specific, but just starting carefully and be patient with yourself and be consistent and be curious and have fun with it. And that's that's what the message I think should be. Yeah, I wanted to add that uh, we have Angela Fischetti who often comes on the show. She's with Women Beyond yes. Wellness, right? And she is uh, an exercise expert amongst many things. She also has, has osteoporosis herself and has healed herself. And one thing that she talked to us about was this weighted vest, which is recommended for people who have osteoporosis because typically we're light weight and we don't have enough weight on us in order to make our bones dense enough because we get these tiny fractures in our bones whenever we are pounding on walking and things like that. And then our body sends in things to cement up those fractures and make them even stronger and denser. But as far as the way that that's, she said, don't go above 10% of your body weight with this weighted vest. So I just wanted to, to communicate that to anybody who is considering doing this. Of course, we're not doctors and we're not giving out medical advice, but I'm passing that along. And and I like how you even mentioned that you just started off with the vest with no weight. Yes. And these yes. vests you can add in, they have little pockets in them. Is that right? Yes. This particular vest, I just did a thing on my YouTube about it if you're interested, but this one inside, it has little weights. Uh, let us see if I can show you. And, um, oh wait, is this one the inside? Oh no, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. This one's on the outside, I, I tried so many different ones. So it's just this little tiny, it's a seventh of a pound. And so they're all over, these little pockets, all over front and back. And I just really like it because it goes up, you know, higher. Um, and I have another one that I used to wear, but what's most important for me is that I can build on it. You know, the ones that come with the weights like sewn in, there's no flexibility. And so for me, I needed to be able to take it all out and just have the vest. And it was one pound, the vest was one pound. And that was great, that was where I started. But I do wanna say to you um, that Yes, I uh, I know Angela and I love Angela Fischetti and she is an amazing, amazing person to work with. And I did have the privilege of working with her early on. And um, so I, I agree with everything you said about her and she helped me start, um, you know, start things off. And uh, she's amazing and I do enjoy watching her on your show. Yeah, well, she's been on so many times. She told her story about osteoporosis and she also has done many, many exercise videos that you can watch and she starts from beginner to advance and she shows ones, especially for osteoporosis. So she's very, if, if you are dealing with osteoporosis, if I was dealing with osteoporosis, that would be the person I would go to to yes. uh, have yes. teleconferences with so that she could give me all the the, the information that she's acquired. Um, and then so, let's see. Do you uh, want me to just um, tell you uh, uh, the next step here or you let yeah. me know I'm ready to move well, on? I have one more question and then we'll yeah. go to the next step. So Rick wants to know how thick is the crust? So how thick is the crust? Um, probably not very thick. 
maybe uh, less than a half an inch, you know, just, um, or maybe even an eighth of an inch. It's just so that I can't see through the bottom. And I, and I, um, so it's a little bit, and then I just take the extra and, and push it around the edges. And I just base it on the amount that I have. So if I doubled this recipe, I could make a thicker crust, but then I wouldn't really have room for the topping. So hopefully I'm gonna show you if you can see this. I know it's really hard to tell. When I have the finished product, I'll show you and you'll also be able to see um, that as well. So I, I hope that is helpful. Okay. Okay, yes, so I'm gonna set that. this aside for a minute so we can do uh, the inside whenever you tell me you're ready. Go, go ahead. Okay, so the inside is um, gonna be some more medjool dates and there's four here and I'm gonna use the Nutra Bullet because I really like how creamy it gets things. Um, and so I'm putting those in there and I already took the pits out. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is this, we're gonna use, this is a tofu. And this is a shelf stabilized silken tofu. You don't want to use the kind that you have that you see that's in the refrigerated section that has the water in it. Um, and so this one is really important um, to make sure you get this one so that it'll be creamy. And so I'm just going to open this up. And this is a brand called Mori Nu, M O R I N U, silken tofu. And it's ready to go. You don't have to do anything, which is another great thing about this recipe. And you can see, I'll show you what it looks like when I pour it in there. It's just, there's nothing to drain, no water. It just plops right out there. I mean, the whole thing just comes out, and you can see that. And so we've got those two items. And then um, I'm gonna use a lemon. We're gonna put some lemon juice. If you don't have lemon, you could certainly use lime, but I really like the lemon. Um, and so what I'm gonna do actually is use a microplane, which is this thing, if you're not familiar, because I wanna save some of the zest. The zest is like the skin um, on the outside. And when you use a microplane, you don't wanna go back and forth like this because uh, right underneath it, it's, it's um, it, the flavor changes when you get the, the under part. You just really want the top layer of it. So you just, I just do one and rotate, one and rotate, one and rotate. And um, then I'll get the really intense flavor of the lemon. And so I'm gonna use this when we top it, when we decorate it and it's gonna give a little extra punch and some uh, spring kind of color. I love the yellow and I love eating this way, anything, uh, you know, in any meal because I get to eat the rainbow and that's using all kinds of colors from natural foods. So I have right. this, I'm gonna set it aside and then I'm gonna cut this lemon and um, lemon tends to have seeds where limes usually don't, so that's, a difference. Uh, so you'll just want to take out any seeds. And then I'm going to use the whole lemon. And lemons vary in size, right? So if you like a strong lemon flavor, add as much as you want and, you know, or do half at a time and just um, decide what flavor works for you. Um, and I think it's stronger at the beginning versus after it sits a little bit. And I'm using this uh, little gadget here. And it's so big that I also use a fork sometimes. Um, but however, you can get the zest out and just, um, I mean, the juice out and not uh, have the seeds go in there is the best way. And here are some seeds. And so that's what I want to do. You could even peel this and put the whole thing in. In fact, why don't we do that? That'll be fun. So, you know, there's no real wrong or right way. You just wanna make sure you don't have seeds and you don't want the skin. So I'm just gonna put the whole thing in and not even waste it. So there we go. And I'm gonna cut it a little bit just to make sure that I don't have any seeds. And I do see a little seed, I got him. And I'm just gonna throw that in there. And I love lemon, like I mentioned. So I'm gonna get this aside. And then another thing that we're gonna do is add vanilla. Now, a lot of people 
do vanilla extract. Let me rinse my hands real quick. I um, love this. I love all your tips about the, the lemon. That is so so nice to know because I've never never really thought I've I've cut peels off of an orange in that way, but I've not done it with a lemon or a lime. So that's a nice hack. Yeah, why not? Right? It's uh it's all edible. And um so yeah, so you can squeeze it, you can also use it. And so I want to just share about vanilla bean powder and vanilla beans in general and vanilla extract. I personally I, I have vanilla extract in my house, but I don't use it. And I don't use it because it's usually uh, has alcohol in it, believe it or not. Um, and so I'd like to try to go to as natural a form as I can. So I do have something called vanilla bean powder. Um, maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not. But yes. if you were going to use this, I would just do like an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, but what I am going to challenge you to do is use a vanilla bean. This is a vanilla bean and they are very pricey. Um, so it's not something that I get to use myself often, but every once in a while, it's fun to do something new. And if you've never used a vanilla bean, then maybe this is your time and you can get them at uh, any store or online. They usually come only one or two beans and they're, they're pricey. I think like this, there were two in here for like 1199. That's, that's a lot of money for me for a bean, but for a special occasion, right? I'm not going out to dinners. I'm not going, I'm not spending money on things that people that are having the standard American diet are spending on. So maybe I'll splurge and have a really special vanilla bean experience. So I'd like to show you how I do that. So you just take the bean and you lay it down. I'm only going to use half and you just want to cut into it. Just score it, score it down the middle. And well, I'll try to cut the whole thing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the insides. You kind of just have to break it open here. And it might be difficult for me to show you, but inside you can take a, a knife, a pair, I'm using a pair of knife, and I'm just gonna scrape it out and I'm gonna show you. This is it. And you don't need very much. And I just put that, that right in there. And I'm going to use, um, you can use as much as you want, but I think I'll use like half a bean. And look at, I'm just, I want to make sure this is out of the way. I'm just scraping it, scraping the skin. And there it is. There is nothing processed about this. This is pure vanilla and it's uh, beautiful. And so I challenge you to do that. And then I can save the rest. Um, and I know that there are some people that even will take the skin part, you know, this outer part and soak it. And um, you could probably even make like vanilla bean water or tea. There's all kinds of things you could research to find. But I was really excited to to share that and just, you know, it it's exciting if you allow it to be exciting. Be curious and look for new things that you're not aware of that you haven't tried and figure out if you want to try something. So I got that in there. And now I am going to put the lid on and we are going to mix it up in the Nutribullet. Okay, and when, and when Jennifer does that, I'm going to mute her again so that we, in case anybody's wearing earbuds or have having somebody sleeping nearby or something that they don't want to disturb, this way we'll have that. So I'm going to mute you for now. And while I'm doing that, I wanted to talk about lemon zest because that is one of the ingredients. And lemon zest contains high levels of antioxidants and particularly vitamin C and something called limonene. And that can help protect your skin from the harmful effects of UV radiation. So the, these antioxidants, they, they neutralize free radicals that are uh, generated by sun exposure. And so they can help reduce the risk of sun damage and promote overall skin health. So it's nice to know that that is something that she's incorporating in this recipe. And I think, are we done? Yes, and I love the Nutribullet. That is just one of the handiest things, even if you have a Vitamix or a full-size blender, that Nutribullet has so many use, uses and sometimes what I, one thing I like about it is that if you have something that you wanted to 
that was especially thick, <laughs> it's a lot easier to scrape it out than working around the blade of a, of a Vitamix. So sometimes it's just nice to have these tools. And like you said, we're not going out to eat all the time. We're eating all this healthy food. So we can make these investments in these ingredients and, and also these appliances to make our life easier. Yes, I totally agree. And I just want to show you the thickness of this. I'm going to get a spoon and show you. Um, let me do that. And this is it. This is the filling. So here you can see it's kind of thick, um, you know, but it's not runny, but it, it's just nice. And it, and it might change a little bit. The thickness might change depending on how much lemon you use, lemon uh, juice. And so um, just keep that in mind. You know, if you like it super, super, you know, lemony and you use more, then that's going to make the liquid a little bit more. And so another, so I'm just going to grab this uh, guy here, our crust, and we're going to fill these. And what I want to share or tell you about, <laughs> I love this thing. Uh, this is like a Vitamix um, spatula thing. And what I like is that it's meant to go under the blades, but it really works great for the Nutribullet. So I just try to get it all in one area you know, like one side, and then I go down the sides and I scrape it. This thing, because I don't like to waste any ingredients, <laughs> so I just like to get every little drop. And then I'm going to take a spoon, um, and I'm just going to, you know, just spoon it in here and fill them until it's all gone. So we could talk while I do that, and, uh, and then we're just going to be able to top it. I love cooking this way because... Ordinarily, you might have eggs or, or, or something in, in this recipe, and you can just taste it as you go if you wanted to, and you wouldn't have to worry about cleaning up and cross-contamination. And I, somebody asked about that spatula. Now, is this that, that a Vitamix brand spatula? Um, let's see. I think um, it doesn't say it on here, but I think it is. Mm -hmm. It's like a hook spatula. Right. And I can, I can look for a link and send it to you, Amy. That would be wonderful. Okay. Because I know that in, in our home, we have gone through many kinds of spatulas that were similar to the one that you're showing. And have, there have been a lot of fails. Oh. <laughs> and we add the Nutribullet and we like it because the Nutribullet, if you're not familiar, it has kind of like seams, about four of them on the inside. And so this spatula just kind of goes right in between the seams. And also the Vitamix vessel has a bunch of like indentations and these spatulas go right in, in those slots. But some of the ones that we've tried were just fails. They, they just didn't, didn't work the way that we had hoped. So if you can share that with us, because maybe you found a good good one and we haven't yet. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I definitely will get you a link. And I just want to say for in here, I'm doing it face upside down. So it's not this way. Uh, the, the hook part is facing towards the inside of the container. And I'm just moving it all to one of those areas that you were talking about. Because, yeah, there's like these little... Um, you know, bumps or <laughs> like little, it's not smooth inside. And so, um, and so it, and then look, you can even use it as like a little spoon. I don't know. I no affiliate, but I just really like it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'm going to look to see if we had, I think I saw another. Um, oh, okay. So James wants to know, is your family whole food plant-based? And if so, did you find it challenging to get them on board with your new eating habits? How did you introduce these changes to them if they are? So, yeah. So, wow, that's a great question. Um, so currently all of my children are grown and live in the, in the area. We're neighbors, you know, we're all local um, and the four grandbabies. So living in my home is just my husband and I, and my husband is not whole food plant-based and he hasn't been, and it's been really difficult. But I gotta say, I really never thought this would happen. He's eating more plants and he is, um, he's doing a great job. So I, you know, being together for as many years, he uh, is like, well, not, he isn't now, but he was 
the king of fast food. And he would even say to me, I'm going to go get my food. Let me know when your food's ready so we could eat together. Mm. And, um, you know, I just had to realize that I just have to worry about me. Mm. And if what I'm doing is of interest and somebody wants to try it, great. But um, so I just make my food for me. And then I say, would you like to have some? And now he says yes. Um, but, um, oh, but now, but okay, so now he says yes, and um, and so it's easier. But we still eat differently because he's not sofas free and he's not gluten free and he needs more calories. So there's this ongoing thing um, and it can be challenging, but that's why it's so important for me to be involved in communities like here, like all of us together here on Be Green with Amy. Um, and I just make the food available. So when we have family gatherings and the whole family comes over, I it's anyone can have it. So I don't really say this is all we're having, but um, I say, this is what I'm having and you're welcome to enjoy it with me. And I think that that makes people feel less threatened or less resistant to change. Uh, change is hard and people have a lot of beliefs and experiences and memories and emotion and, um, you know, cravings and addictions and all those different things. And so if I just focus on me and let myself be the example, when they're ready, if they're ready, they'll, they'll try it. So I hope that answers your question. I also just want to say we have separate pantries in the house. Uh, we're in Arizona and so we don't need a coat closet. And so I took our coat closet and I turned it into a walk-in pantry and that's my pantry. And then the regular pantry that came in the kitchen, which is actually a smaller pantry, uh, is for everybody else, including the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like your answer. And I think that, that that's the best way is just to make it available and, and you don't want them to try to change your mind about how you're eating. So you shouldn't be trying to change their mind. And over time, I think people will lean into it. And and some, I've had family members, I've been doing this since 2012, and I have family members that have just recently come on board. So oh. it can take a while. <laughs> it takes a while. Yeah. But you know, when I stopped pushing what was working for me on anyone else, First of all, it's a burden that's released. Yeah. And secondly, um, they'll come around if and when they wanna come around. It's unfortunate that people have to get diagnosed with something in order to make the change, but sometimes they don't. And sometimes they're just curious and they, you know, so just keep doing what you're doing and, um, and just, you know, if, if you want, I mean, for me, I just make it available. And if my husband wants something, he's got to, you know, get it outside because I, you know, we, we've, we've been on a change for a long time. Um, but anyways, I did want to just take a minute and show you here they are, they're filled. And so um, what the next part is, is to top them. And I have some fruit here that I have uh, cut up. I can show you how to cut a mango. I don't know how we are on time, or I can just uh, talk to you about this. But what I think is the best thing to do is to put these in the freezer and you let them freeze for about two hours. Now, if you're going to freeze them, what will happen is it will solidify them so that you can pop them up because it's too wet right now and it won't hold its form. And so if you're going to use it, let's say I'm going to use it tonight in five hours or whatever, I can freeze it for two hours and then I can uh, pop it out. And if I'm gonna use it right away, I will put the fruit on it, even if I'm putting it in the freezer. But if I'm gonna freeze it indefinitely or for a week or something, then when I take it out, I wanna let it sit out or put it in the refrigerator just so that it's not frozen. I will put the fresh fruit on at that time because I think that the fresh fruit makes it and it doesn't look, you know, um, kind of wilted or anything. And some of the fruits, you can use anything, but I have, this is mango that I took out of the freezer in little pieces, but I also have fresh mango. And if we have time, I can show you how to cut that up. Um, 
And then I have mulberries again, right? This is a lot of mulberries. These are from my tree. I picked them this morning um, and they look like this. They're, they look like a, like a boysenberry or a blackberry, just tiny. And so I can use these. Um, there's fresh um, raspberries, blueberries. I've got strawberries and kiwi. And I can show you how to cut up a kiwi if you're uh, interested in that. And what you do is you can make them all uniform and put the fruit, everything looking the same. You could bring in your kids and, you know, have fun with it. Or you can make all of them look different. So you could put just literally a strawberry, you know, on a few of them and call it a day. Or you can, you know, get creative and put some blueberries around here, put a stripe of mango across the middle and maybe some kiwi in between and just have fun with it and make it whatever you want because it's just fruit so you know i'm going to put some of these mulberries on here and you can use any fruit you want um so you know you could even just you know cut some of this up into smaller pieces too and um i just want to let you know that the the spatula um the spatula link uh, is in the chat now. I think um, we put it in the chat there. So oh, thank you. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that, but we'll also uh, send it to you or whatever you oh, want. So, um, yeah, so you just have fun with it. And, um, and then we put it in the freezer. Now, I have some that I already did because I wanted to be able to pop them out and show you. So I'm going to not finish decorating these. I'm going to put this aside and show you um, what, I, what I have that we could taste and show you what it looks like. And also just, you know, any fruit. I, I mean, anything. You could use apple slices. You could use pear. You could use banana. You know, the only thing I would think with banana is that it's a light color. And so maybe put something dark under it, like, or a darker color, like um, the kiwi and, or a slice of one of these fruits. But I really love the berries. Um, they're small and you could even cut the, the, bl the blueberries in half. And so let me grab this from the refrigerator. One moment. Okay. Well, everything looks so delicious. And uh, C wanted to know, do you still reduce electricity in cellular things? Yes, we do. We, we did start using a little bit of the lights, um, but we still have everything else the same. Um, and we have a timer that we bought that turns off the Wi-Fi at a certain hour. Uh, I don't know what ours is set for, but maybe it's set for nine or 10 at night. And then it comes back on at 6 a.m. So we don't have Wi-Fi on in the house during that time. And, um, you know, we just try our best. I mean, EMFs are all over, electromagnetic fields are all over us. So we just try our best. And I stopped sleeping with the cell phone a long time ago and that's still, it's nowhere, it's on the other side of the house. Um, and so hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, we ha I have interviewed uh, Dr. Peter Rogers. He's been on quite a few times and he talks about the whole food plant-based lifestyle, but he also talks about things like EMF. And he talked about putting mirrors on his walls in his bedroom backwards. Wow. And because he's trying to reflect off things. So he, yeah, he, he's, oh. he's, he's done a lot of, uh, so you, if, if you're interested in that type of thing, he's been on the show, he comes on monthly. And you can even uh, watch while he comes on. He'll be on at the uh, end of the month. And you can even ask him specific questions about that if you're oh. interested. Because he, he's one of the only whole food plant-based doctors that goes beyond nutrition. That's amazing. Um, and I have seen him on your show. But I'm going to go look for that one because I didn't see that one. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. And yes, there's so many components of this lifestyle. And, um, you know, the more I get into it, the more I learn, the more areas I want to explore. And um, because I just want to live a long life, but not just to live it. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to enjoy it. I don't want to live to X number of years when I spend 10 or 20 of the last years or even now suffering and not enjoying it. You know, when I was bedridden, I actually said to my husband, I mean, I, and I'm quoting this, I, I was crying and I was in my bed and I was feeling all this sensation that would not 
turn off. And I just said to him, I'm not suicidal, but I don't want to live in this body mm-hmm. like this. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so, you know, for me, I just, when I discovered something that was helping, like, I just want to keep learning, keep exploring and keep on the path because it feels so good to feel so good, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, so let's see these beautiful fruit tart cups. Oh, how lovely. And so you can kind of see, um, let me just see which one I should, I don't even know which one to pick, but you could have these all uniform and they would look really lovely on a platter, but I tried to do different ones so that you could see. And then you even can, and then, you know, so after this, then you take that, um, the lemon zest, wherever I put it, um, oh, right here. And I already did it on these, but you could take the lemon zest and then you just sprinkle a little of it right on top. There's nothing that you need to do with it. And it just gives it a little added color. I'll show you. And um, there you go. And so once they uh, thaw enough to handle, you could even cut these. You know, like, um, you know, I brought these before to a potluck. And they like it to be smaller, like, sample tasting. So I cut them and laid them sideways. Um, And so do you want me to taste it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I wish I could. Yeah, I wish I could uh, share with everyone. You are sharing and it, we can make it at home. So go ahead. Okay, go here on. we go. Mm. <laughs> oh, yummy. It's really good. Oh, I, I can just imagine. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, it's and it's holding good. together pretty well. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it, uh, cause these were in the freezer and then I thawed them. <laughs> and so here's a bite for everyone. <laughs> oh, well, we, we made it look so easy. I think that all of us are going to try this. And, uh, Rick said, looks tasty. Yum. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> and I love how we can eat these kinds of foods and not just not only knowing that it is nourishing our body and it's doing good for our body, but also we don't have to worry about feeling bad about afterwards that we did it and, right. and, and uh, saying bad things to ourselves. Oh, you should not have done that. Say, good job. You did that. <laughs> yes. So it's yes. wonderful. And they're, they're so simple. And, you know, if you find that it's getting too soft, put it back in the freezer a little bit. I mean, it's so it's a refreshing. It's cold because it was, you know, in the refrigerator. And so it's a great summer treat. Um, and I, yeah, I hope everybody tries it. I'd love any feedback that you leave for Amy. Um, just, you know, to let, let us know what you think, including you, Amy. I hope to oh, hear yes, from you. Yes, I'm definitely <laughs> going to let you know about, because I know that that's going to be something that we are definitely going to try here. Nice. Because we, we love desserts. And for us, we, we keep lots of desserts in the freezer. So we batch cook them and this can be something else that we keep in the freezer. We also, we host potlucks, whole food plant-based potlucks. So this is something that we can also share with our our plant-based friends. And it's just so nice to know that you have something in the freezer that if you just want a little treat, there it is. And it doesn't take long and you can enjoy it. So that's just wonderful. And um, And, you know, I just want to say, since I didn't really get a chance to show, once it's frozen, you just push the bottom, you just push up. And it will pop right out this little round shape uh, if you have this kind of a pan. And so, you know, in case you were wondering, how do you get it out of here? You don't need a knife. You don't need to score anything. You just literally push it up. And, you know, if I do it now, it's not going to work. But I'm just going to show you anyways. Oh, look at that. Maybe it did work. Look at that. You see? Wow. Oh, my goodness. Go. Well, look at that. Here you go. Ah, I surprised myself. <laughs> So. See, it pops right out. And you can use those for so many different recipes. So they they are they really come in handy. Rick yes. Warner, do you use flax and or chia seeds? I do. I do use flax, chia, and hemp. And I rotate them. Um, I put them sometimes. I drink green smoothies or I love hemp seeds in my salad. Uh, flax seed, I will, you know, of course, you want to grind it up. You don't want to use the whole seed. And um, so I'll do that and I'll put it on anything. Um, and sometimes I even will blend the chia um, and make chia pudding or um, just put it directly on anything. But yes, I do. 
Okay, well, thank you for sharing that. Well, we have just really been enjoying everything that you've been doing as yeah. far as these one of the wonderful recipe demo and how you've shared a lot of tips and hacks with us. And I really appreciate that. And I, of course, I do appreciate you sharing your, your journey with us. Um, LaShawn said, wow, Jennifer, you've been through so much. You're such a warrior. Oh, thank so, you, LaShawn. Yes. Thank yes. you. And I really, appreciate that. Yeah. You, ha you have um, done so much for us today because by sharing all of these journeys that you've gone through and the things that you've tried and, and you and some of them helped, some of them didn't, but it just, it, I think it gives a lot of people hope. People who are, are struggling with things that they haven't gotten the answers for, that now that they know that they can still don't give up, there are things that you can do to, to keep trying and keep trying to learn different things. And I really wanted to just thank you so much for sharing your fruit tart cup recipe. You know, I was thinking about your name, Jennifer Diamond, and how much like a, a rough diamond, you know, that undergoes careful cutting and polishing to reveal its its true brilliance. You've transformed through many health trials. So I really want to thank you for sharing that powerful testament uh, to the healing power of whole food plant-based diet. And and I know, I'm sure my Green Warriors share this. I mean, we're just so grateful for your insights and your courage. You did tell us in the presentation, but some people may have hopped in late. So tell us more about how we can find you. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate all the love and I want to send it right back your way and just let you know that there there really is hope. There is a way that you could try something new. You, you just have to be open to trying something new. And so um, how you can get a hold of me, uh, currently you can find me on YouTube at uh, youtube.com at the Jennifer Diamond and um, Instagram. I'm on uh, mostly just posting pictures of food, and that's Diamond Girl 369. Um, and I am going to be putting up a website in the near future, uh, so you'll have other ways to get a hold of me uh, through there at that time. Um, and I'll let you guys know on my YouTube when that happens. So thank you so much. Uh, it's been a huge privilege for me um, just sharing and and hopefully reaching someone touching someone uh who might be sitting in that bedroom the way that i was uh not wanting to live anymore not because i don't enjoy life but because life was so unenjoyable you um i i i hope that if anything resonates with you it's just to know you're not alone there's a beautiful community here and know that you can just try something it sounds radical fruits and vegetables, but they keep inflammation down and they feed our body and our body is made up of cells and the cells come from the food that we eat. And it just makes sense to, to eat beautiful food. So thank you. Oh, that's so wonderful. And we, I, we just keep getting more and more people uh, appreciating what you did. Donna said, so appreciated your shares. There's hope. And congrats on your current and future success. That's wonderfully put. Everybody, please, please click like for Jennifer. She shared so much with us today. And she stayed on longer than, than I told her she would be here. But we had so many questions for her. And hopefully okay. maybe she'll come back again and, and share more recipes and, and more information with us. And we're just so grateful for your insights and your courage, Jennifer. So tell us, what, what's your final take-home message for our team? You know, just that basically what I what I already shared and it, it's just that um, there's lots to discover in foods that you wouldn't be familiar with. And, you know, just just invest in something new for yourself, uh, no matter where you are, whether you're healing or you're just losing weight or whatever. Um, it's a new way. It's a you have to be patient with yourself. Uh, there's new things to discover, you know, like not cooking with oil. Yes, you could not cook with oil and oil isn't really flavorful, um, you know, but, you know, it's just trying new things. So that's what I would say. Just be open to trying new things and maybe you'll surprise yourself. 
Yes, very, very well said. Green Warrior, tell us in the comments, what are you going to remember from today's presentation or the recipe demo? I have lots of things that I can remember. And one of my takeaways was how, why, why just squeeze a lemon? Why not just cut the, the, <laughs> the peel off of it and throw it in that Nutribullet or the Vitamix? So that was a nice hack yeah. that I'm going to be trying soon. And awesome. I also, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I also wanted to thank Jess Tass Voice. She did the promo. She did the countdown. She helped so much in getting the word out on social media so that you, all of you could join us here. And Jess Tass Voice, tell us who's coming up next. Someone I just spoke about. Wish you could prove to your healthcare provider that pills and procedures are not the answers to chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, obesity, and more? Join us on our next broadcast with Dr. Peter Rogers as we discuss the urgent need for medical reformation and alternative approaches to promote true healing and wellness. Don't miss this eye-opening discussion on the shortcomings of current healthcare practices. Join us as we learn from Peter Rogers, MD, Wednesday, May 29th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Be Green with Amy Live. And a special thank you, Green Warrior, for joining us today. Your engagement and support make these discussions meaningful and impactful. And I hope you're feeling inspired to take a closer look at your food choices and make some positive changes for your health and well being. And please remember that every bite we take is an opportunity to nourish our bodies and become the healthiest versions of ourselves. And I wanted to also tell you to stay tuned for more empowering content. Please subscribe to my channel and share my message and check out Jennifer's channel and share it with others who can benefit together as Green Warriors. We can make a meaningful difference in the world. And as a special thank you to all of you, I'm offering you five free recipes. And if you just go to my website, begreenwithamy.com slash join, I will send you five free whole food plant-based SOS free recipes. And I would like to invite you now to take your right hand and grab your left shoulder and take your left hand and grab your right shoulder. Now squeeze, because that's a hug from me to you and from me to you, Jennifer. And I wanted to thank all of you for being here. It's so lovely. And if you would like to comment my tagline below in the comments as we sign off with Jennifer, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Until I see all of you again, remember, be strong, be well, and be green. green. <laughs> Woo! Yes, be green. <laughs> Looking for really tasty recipes that are SOS free? No sugar, oil, or salt. How can it taste good? Well, if you like flavor, then you'll love this Be Green with Amy recipe ebook. Get your copy today. Click on the link in the show notes. Be strong, be well, and be green.